Hey guys, today we are going to take this total F-35 from Hobby Lobby and transform it into this beautiful model. Um, I have the airframe version only here and I inspected all the foam. It all looks very nice. One cool thing the Hobby Lobby did here is they installed all the servo extensions and they all come to this one place all ready for the receiver. They also installed the retracts which are kind of nice. And then we also have the fan here. I will not be installing this, but I just wanted to let you know that they do include a 7 millimeter, 70 millimeter fan. And we also have all our parts and accessories. We will only be using a few of these today. How I'm going to start here is I'm just going to assess the damage on, uh, on the crashed uh, F-35 from Hobby Lobby. So this came as the plug and play version. As you can see, all the foam can't be used. But uh, all the retracts are still in here. That means we'll have extra retracts, extra servo wires. So what I'm going to do first thing is I'm going to pull out the motor and put it right in there. Now the reason that I'm doing the motor first is it's going to be hard with all the control services already installed to put the motor in. So I'm just going to do that first. So first thing before you install the motor, remember the ESC because that has to go in the right in there because there won't be any room. It would be harder to stick your hand in uh, when the motor's in there. So it just has a nice slot in the foam that you put it in. So it's in the passage of the air flow. And you run the, um, the ESC wires um, and the servo wire for the ESC through here and up, up this hole. A quick thing when I was um, attaching the motor, I, I didn't have the match plugs. I, uh, they were already unplugged when this plane got to me. So... Um, I matched the plugs up with their right colors on the ESC, and it looks like Hobby Lobby or whoever the distributor did, um, that what they did is they put colors matching um, the motor colors at each end of the lead, um, and those uh, colors for this motor are false. All you have to do is just switch one around, and it's all good. Just make sure that you're feeling wind blow against you if you put your fingers here. Okay, so I taped down the ESC. I left uh, this not covered by tape just for cooling. But I did put tape on the sides and right here, right in front of the motor, and all the way back there. Um, one of the things when putting in the motor is you might want to put some CA on these, um, these little um, wood things because they come off really easily. So I carefully took out the elevator servos from the old plane and I put them in here basically the longest um, the longest servo extension is for the elevator uh, servos uh, this one it was already pulled through but this one it was kind of a pain to pull the lead through because it's a small hole you can enlarge that hole but I didn't really want to and also when you're stripping it from there if you crash like us um, just be careful so you don't um, mess up the servo, the servo leads. Be careful where you're, um, you know, grabbing the servo. Okay, so I just got all the vector uh, servos on. It's funny because you kind of have to check which servo um, extension is for what servo. Um, for the horizontal uh, dust vectoring, this little uh, servo that comes down, it's almost like it comes out of the foam. That one's for the horizontal um, vector. And you kind of have to experiment with everything else. I found out that the longest one goes for the elevator. But that's about it. You kind of, I plug my receiver in to check everything. Okay, so I got the retract servos all set up. It's a really nice fit. Um, one thing that uh, I want to point out is, is uh, the bottom thing popped out of these connectors between the, um, the wire and the servo arm. And I looked for another one, and in the accessories bag, or the parts, um, Hobby Lobby has included uh, a whole set of those uh, connectors, so that was really nice. Um, I haven't glued anything in, but they all go in very nicely. Um, no trimming needed, just, you know, remember how you had it in there, and you should be pretty fine. Okay, so now we have all the electronics that were originally in the plane before it crashed. 
Now we're going to start the installation of the wing. So the first thing that you do with the wings is you install the old servos um, in here. Okay, the epoxy is just about done uh, curing. Uh, I use 5 minute epoxy. I wouldn't recommend using this... Um, I don't know what this is. This is like some type of epoxy that the company has provided. I wouldn't use this. I would use something like um, this kind of epoxy, uh, quick cure. Something that's a little more professional. It's a little more reliable. Okay, I just finished. I just finished installing the elevator uh, control services. What you have to do is you have to put epoxy in here and then stick these little T things in there and then put a little epoxy over it just for hold. Um, before you do that, remember to put the push rods in because they don't come installed on the airframe only. Uh, or the the push, the thing that attaches to the push rods. Um, then screw those in and I'd recommend putting a uh, foam safe CA on the screws and on the horn itself. Okay, next I'm going to install the rudder. One thing you need to remember is always have the F35 on the outside, that little logo there. Um, it's on both of them. I almost forgot the nose cone. One thing I want to point out on the nose cone is this part is really fragile. It's probably not going to last a few trips to the airfield. This is this pops off really easily. Uh, one thing that I want you to um, notice is this is a free wing aircraft. So anyone who um, is has built a free wing aircraft, especially with thrust vectoring before, this build would be absolutely fine for you. Okay, so I have all the wings, rudders, and stabilizers in. Um, now I had to uh, attach these linkages. What they want you to do is from one inch from the top of the airframe um, and then to one inch down, which is about where that thing is, um, right there. That's where they want you to have the stabilizer. Okay, I got all the vector stuff all hooked up, all the push rods. Uh, this one's a little hard to install. It just takes some effort. Uh, I'd recommend uh, spraying um, the activator onto the servo first so you can just stick the nozzle of the glue down here so that you don't have to worry about it, um, it bonding at all. Um, so this one basically bends back all the way here. That's probably the most challenging one but it's still very doable. Okay, so we have all the programming for the thrust vectoring set up. Um, I'm going to show you what can happen um, in the airplane. So right now, I just, um, actually, the, the vectoring system when I first turned it on doesn't even work. Basically, the rudder switch is the on-off switch for the thrust vectoring system. So you just flick that switch, and then it works. But, oh wow, the uh, vector system is backwards. So all you have to do is just reverse the uh, AUX1 switch and it should go together fine. Um, the uh, rudder switch should work. Don't taxi like this though because it has very low rates on the uh, front nose gear. Uh, and then when you're taxiing, all you need to do is just turn that on and you get the, the right throws. But everything looks fine. And let's do taxi test. This concludes this week's video. On behalf of myself and the crazy guy who crashed that plane, thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe to the Bay Area Flyers channel.